Club TV. I'm Deuteronomy Phillips and I'm Norman Shropany and today we'll be looking at the amazing world of the allotropes of carbon. Firstly we'll be looking at everybody's favourite form of carbon, graphite. What are you drawing there Norm? Hi there Dick, I'm drawing a mole here who's got a pan bag and he's got soda fopping in his mouth. Oh very nice. Thank you. Amazing, isn't it, how the graphite leaves a mark on the paper? But it's not magic. It's science. But to fully understand how it works, we're going to have to take a closer look at the graphite. Not like that, you silly. As you can see, graphite is arranged in layers. Each layer is formed of strongly bonded atoms, usually in hexagons, just like a beehive. But the bonds between the layers are weak, meaning that they can slide over each other easily, and therefore leave some of it behind on the paper. Oh hi! I've just been making some modifications to the lighting in this house. I've actually replaced some of the wiring with a graphite pencil. Look what happens when I turn it on. Amazing, isn't it? The light still works because graphite conducts electricity. But it's not a metal, it's a metalloid. Buckminster fullerene is a newly discovered natural allotrope of carbon, whose atoms are arranged to form a complete sphere. You may have seen a sphere before in its common form as a football. Much like this one. A buckyball is only 7 to 15 angstroms in diameter. That's only about a billionth of a metre. That's even smaller than this pea. No real use has been found for Buckminster fullerene yet. Which makes it pretty boring and useless, really. On to the next one. Have you ever wondered how the magical diamonds in your mother's jewellery were formed? The answer is probably no, but here in this show, we're going to tell you anyway. Diamond is formed by carbon, 1500 kilometres under the Earth's crust, exposed to high pressure and temperature. The longer the exposure, the larger the crystal. The tetrahedral structure of carbon makes it extremely hard around 167 to 231 gigapascals to be exact. That's even harder than wood, concrete and titanium. But maybe not as hard as John Rambo. That's it for today's show. But join us next time when we have a look at the funner side of chemistry and blow a lot of stuff up.